Haleluya. Acts chapter 3. As we continue in the process of fire burning, death. <laughs> it's a good day to die. Amen. <laughs> The end result of everything is fresh outpouring. That, that's what everything in, associated with the kingdom of God is so he can get us to a fresh outpouring. Where there's a fresh outpouring, there's fresh revelation. Everything is becoming new. Because people become stagnant. Become weary. Become weak. Become disoriented. They begin to drift. They fall from a routine to a ritual. Without a fresh outpouring, it's very difficult. But what draws the fresh outpouring is the hunger and thirst for God's presence. And that's where confession is made daily. Without you, I'm nothing. I need your presence. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. It doesn't mean you might react. Amen? But you get out of it. That last song that we sing, run into your arms, overwhelmed by your presence. Delight. See, to delight is to desire. When you delight, you desire. Again, I want to share, because we talked about this before, where many people are falling into the letter and not being led by the Spirit. See, when there's a process to where you are hungry and thirsty for His presence, because that's where His righteousness is. That's where His character is. That's where His Word is released. That's who He is through His presence. And it's our responsibility to know His presence. So there must be a fresh outpouring in our life continuously. We long for it every single day, a fresh outpouring. We long for a fresh revelation every day. We must long for those things. How do you long for them? You ask for them. You desire them. And when you don't desire them, you ask for them so that you can desire them. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you, we must maintain the level of a fresh outpouring for every single one of us. So you can come in here and sing the songs, but not get refreshed. Because there's something that must always go before. It's called humbleness. Humility. You must repent. Why? Repent activates the blood. The blood goes before the spirit. So the blood comes, then the spirit's able to follow. Always, in everything in our life. The Spirit always follows the blood. Has everybody got it? So when there's a distance in relationship, is because there's something there that is not activating the blood. In other words, there's true, not a true repentance, not a true sorrow of something that has occurred. There's a, just a repentance and ex expectation of God to do something and that isn't going to happen because there must be a broken heart sometimes. Amen? There must be a true repentance in everything that you and I do. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 18. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all of his prophets that the Christ would suffer, he is thus fulfilled. Repent. Is everybody okay? Okay. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing. How many of you know times is more than once? Amen. So that a continuous refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, 
whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things. So he's telling us, look it, there must be repentance and refreshing is available all the time. But there's something that also follows refreshing, restoration. Verse 21, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Again, times of refreshing brings restoration. It is pearl. Many opportunities to be refreshed in the presence of the Lord. But there's something that must be done. You can't repent without being humble. See, people try to repent and there's really not a true sorrow. There's not a true repentance. Humble repentance. You can come and scream, cry, and praise, and worship, and nothing happens without a humble repentance. Amen? So people look at works, what they're doing, instead of the heart. And too many people start to live out of the mind instead of the heart. And in that, there is a desire. You and I, your fulfillment and my fulfillment is in the presence of God, no matter what it is. That's why when we go to places, we should be seeking the presence of God wherever we go. When you gather together in fellowship and worship, there should be a presence of God there. That's why there's so many drug addicts, because they're missing the presence of God. Amen? It's been deceived. The enemy always tries to replace the presence of God with a false fulfillment. But for me and you, if we maintain a fresh outpouring in our life, you won't look back. You're always going forward. In fact, you're living from the future to the present. Why? Because you're standing on the promises of God all the time. But there's got to be something important. What he says must be true. And only by the Spirit of God are you able to interpret this word. Amen? But his presence will bring interpretation. His presence will bring the true word of God. His presence... And in his presence, there's an exchange made all the time. Fresh outpouring, fresh outpouring, fresh outpouring. We cry for it. We want it. We need it. Without him, we're nothing. Amen? In Second Chronicles 7. Hallelujah. The word says, when I am weak, then I am strong. How? Strong in what? Not in yourself. See, when you're weak into yourself, because that's what the word says, de you must decrease that he can increase. Amen? So we are strong in his presence. It says, be, and you've heard this before many times, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. It ain't going to come without a fresh outpouring. Hallelujah. Oh, glorious. Second Chronicles in chapter 7, in verse 13. Let's speak it together. The Lord said, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by name will what? Humble themselves. And what? Pray. And what? Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and what? Heal. How's the land going to be healed? Fresh outpouring. Does everybody get it? If my people who are called by, if they will humble themselves, if they're going to pray and they're going to seek my face. That's called humble repentance. Healing the land is a fresh outpouring. And that's what this whole country needs right now. These politicians need to be brought to their knees. Because there are many corrupt. God desires that all men be saved. All men. But without God's presence, nothing's going to happen. 1 Peter chapter 5. Fresh outpouring. There is a fresh outpouring going on right now. Uh, 
Why is there a fresh outpouring going on right now? Because there's so much corruption that people are seeking God. They're seeking him for an answer. They're seeking him for refuge. They're seeking him for shelter. And God's pouring out a spirit. 1 Peter 5, verse 5. Let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, though that's rebellious. But he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the money hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Exalting you in due times means he's going to pour out his presence on you. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour or steal. To be humble is to deny oneself. There is the formula. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow, right? But you cannot deny yourself if you're not humble. And you can't humble yourself if you're not willing to deny yourself. Again, to be humble is to deny oneself. God will exalt you in, in due time. It comes from his presence. In fact, everything comes from his presence. <laughs> everything. In fact, his word should always lead you to his presence. Psalm 92. Need a fresh outpouring, not a flesh outpouring. The world's getting a flesh outpouring. <laughs> the kingdom's getting a fresh outpouring. Psalm 92. <laughs> verse 1. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. On an instrument of ten strings, on a lute, on a harp, with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh, Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring up like grass, and when all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. In other words, that they may be exposed. But you, Lord, are on high forever. And behold your enemies, O Lord. For behold, your enemies shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox, and I have been anointed with what? Fresh oils and an outpouring. Amen. My eye also will see my desire on my enemies, and my ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. Fresh oil. Now look, at he's telling us here also that when this fresh outpouring comes and there's fresh oil, you're going to be able to see differently and hear differently. So there's a level that you and I must maintain in a continuous fresh outpouring to be refreshed all the time. Again, it takes repentance and to be humble. We want to be refreshed just like when you go take a shower, you're refreshed. At least I hope you are. Amen. Not refreshed, refreshed. That's what it's like. It's like rain in, in the presence of God. You are refreshed. You hear better. You see better. You're more sensitive. You're more discerning. In fact, many people come out and they say, man, the Lord spoke to me in the shower. Praise God. <laughs> Why? Because you finally shut up and listen. But there's an area. People are singing in the shower. Well, there's the rain. <laughs> But it's an opportunity to bring God's presence all the time. 
You and I don't want to miss those opportunities for that fresh pouring out all the time. It's a fresh outpouring. He's always, it's almost like the cloud of God's glory is always around us because he loves to hang out with his kids. But if you're not going to seek and knock, nothing comes. See, there's a false expectation that we expect God to do things no matter what. And I'm not saying he doesn't sometimes. Amen? He likes to surprise us. But there's an area where we must draw near to him, then he draws near to us. There's an area where you hold on to him, and then he holds on to you. We need a fresh outpouring and an increase of the anointing. Again, remember, John the Baptist said, I must decrease that he can what? Increase. Amen. In Psalm 63. Glory. Psalm 63 and verse 1. You know, the Holy Spirit will give you psalms to speak when you ask him. Why? Because he knows what you need, some, and you don't know what you need sometimes. You may, we may think we know what we need sometimes. But there's times when we don't really know what we need. And ask the Holy Spirit, what prayer do you want me to speak? We have a penetrating prayer booklet. We can speak certain prayers out of that. But then there are psalms that he gives us. And this psalm in 63, if you'll speak it with me, the first five verses. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul what? Thirst for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the what? Sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Why? Because stumbling brings a fresh outpouring. Amen? See, so it's not a religious act. It's not a control of the kingdom or the body. It's an area where you get a refreshing outpouring by being assembled together. Why? So we can get to the next level. Get to the next thing. You know, some people, people try to do things and they wonder why they're struggling. Because they haven't been refreshed. Amen? They haven't been refreshed. And even though they may come to service, they're still not getting refreshed because their mind is everywhere else. They're still thinking about this, that, whatever, what they've done. Hello? Or what they need to do. Still thinking about family and this and that. Man, you need to empty your head. Amen? It's not about nothing else. Now, when conviction comes, you need to repent. Don't just toss it aside. When the Holy Spirit says, you need to repent for this and stop doing this, you need to repent. Why? Because that's humbling yourself. So that a refreshing can come all the time. Fresh outpouring. So let me tell you something else that what happens. In that, God's presence is so important to you. So vitally important. You are now so in love with his presence. Not with, about, not with a God you read about. You're in love with his presence that nothing else satisfies. You're no longer a man pleaser. You're a God pleaser. This is where people, why do people are so concerned about pleasing man? <laughs> it's because they lack the presence of God. If people were more filled with the presence of God and desired a fresh outpouring in their life all the time, a refreshing, man, there'd be great unity in the body of Christ. People would love one another more. They wouldn't gossip. They'd realize that that is stupid. And it brings nothing but harm. Verse 3. Let's speak it. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall what? Praise you. Now here's somebody seeking the presence of God. <laughs> Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise you with joyful 
lips, fresh outpouring. What to those who seek and who thirst? John chapter 7. We don't come to fellowship to fellowship. Does everybody get it? We come to get a fresh touch from God, a fresh outpouring. We come to say thank you, and the more you say thank you, the more he comes to you. We want to draw him to us. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with saying the law and whatever. But it's not a gathering of fellowship to fellowship. It's a gathering to bring God's presence because you fellowship with him, then your fellowship with everyone else is a lot better. Hallelujah. John seven thirty seven. Is everybody there? On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit had, was not yet given, because he was not yet glorified. Again, here's something powerful, because fresh outpouring, come on feast days. Acknowledging the feast days is vitally important. Just acknowledging them. Man, we're in the feast of Passover. This is a feast of first fruits. This is a, does everybody understand it? Acknowledge, that's why God set up the feast. So that those that acknowledge the feast, there be a fresh outpouring. Just by acknowledging the feast. Amen? Jeremiah 17. You know how many believers that don't even know about the Feast of the Lord? It's pretty sad. That's, they're the Feast of the Lord, not the Feast of men. Jeremiah 17. Oh, glory. In verse 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Okay. Blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord. Now, let me ask you this. Is it easier to trust in the Lord with more of God's presence or less presence? More of God's presence. Amen. Blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. That's future. For he shall be like a tree planted by the what? Waters who spread out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat or troubles come, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought. Here it is. Why do people get anxious? They're droughted. <laughs> They're dry. Amen? <laughs> My vocabulary. <laughs> so again, people become anxious. They can't endure. They're not patient without God's presence. Do you ever get around somebody that can't, they can't endure? They're, they're, <laughs> they're like constantly in move, 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 move. They can't sit still. And they never shut up. They are anxious. They got an anxious tongue, an anxious mind, and an anxious heart. They're like a number 20. <laughs> and by the, the, they ask one question. Before, you can't answer it. There's 16 more. Hallelujah. So again, it says that they will 
Their, its leaves will be green, and they will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. That's fruit of the Spirit, okay? Nine. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. In other words, he searches the desires and tests the mind or the thoughts. Even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. Fresh outpouring. He tests the hearts and the minds of the thoughts and the desires. And he rewards them with a fresh outpouring. God's always rewarding me and you with a fresh outpouring. His presence and then answers. Why? Because where do the answers come from? His presence. Amen. Psalm 42. Psalm 42, verse 7. Hallelujah. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. At the noise of your what? Waterfalls. Fresh outpouring. Look at all your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me. A prayer to the God of my life. So in this, he was talking about the area of a fresh outpouring. Deep calls on to deep. There's a deeper level in relationship. There's a deeper level of mysteries that are revealed. There's a deeper level of revelation for you and for myself as we maintain that fresh outpouring, that freshness. Deeper things come to us. Amen. But you know what? So many times when God is trying to bring this fresh outpouring to his people, distractions come. And people get distracted and think something's better and not knowing. That's when they miss it. The word tells us that when a person becomes dry, they miss the things of God. But when you're saturated, you don't. You become a magnet to the things of God. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. I believe that we are not only an area of fresh outpouring, but we are getting ready to receive... Not only the early and latter rain, but I've talked about already the aggressive anointing. It's becoming more and more. Right now, you know, again, every time there's been chaos and destruction and stuff to that degree, God always pours out his presence afterwards. Why? Because it brings healing. It brings restoration. It brings a renewing. It brings a fresh love for God's presence. So no matter what you're going through, that's why it says count it all joy. Amen? Count all joys you're going through stuff. Why? You, why? Because as you go through it, you know God's going to restore you to a fresh presence, a fresh outpouring all the time. But so many people get caught up in the circumstances and not rejoice in what's coming. Listen, we're going to go through it no matter what. Remember, you're going to go through it. Just don't get stuck there. Amen? Go through it knowing that there's something waiting for you because going through it is an is what we call endurance. And God rewards your endurance. Endurance of righteousness. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward, and I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. 
And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Has that happened? Yeah. Before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Now that's a heck of a presence. His coming. The day he steps his foot in this place, everything's changing. In fact, he doesn't even step foot in the place. He just has to hang out. Say, yo, it's all done. Hallelujah. Verse 32, And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. He will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Again, remember, everything you're seeing right now all over the world is to get people in a position to create an atmosphere for hunger and thirst for God so that a fresh outpouring can come. Daniel chapter 10. Glory, hallelujah. Daniel 10. You know what else happens when there's a fresh outpouring and you begin to taste, touch, and sense God's presence and change? It increases your faith. See, we need not only to be refreshed in the fresh outpouring of God's presence, but refreshed in faith all the time. His presence activates things in us. 10.10. 10. And Daniel said, Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. And he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for... From the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have, become, I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief priests, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. And when he had spoke such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And suddenly one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision my sorrows have overwhelmed me, and I have re retained no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me, nor in my breath left in me. Then again, the one having the likeness of man touched me and did what? And strengthened me. What did he do? He gave him a fresh outpouring right there. Boom, boom. Jesus always had a fresh outpouring. He said that when the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to battle, he came out stronger. <laughs> Why? Because God refreshes endurance all the time. When you endure, he rewards you with a refreshing of his presence. Hallelujah. Luke 6. So just know that no matter what you're going through, the reward is a fresh touch from God. Hallelujah. Luke 6, verse 17.
Everybody there? It says that he came down with them and stood, or yeah, and, and st stood on a level place where the crowd of his, this is Jesus, crowd of his disciples, and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem, and from uh, the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him, and he healed, and to be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to what? Touch him. For power went out from him and healed them all. They sought to touch him. In other words, they had a desire to go after him. That's a want, isn't it? They sought to touch him so they could be healed. So when you and I come together, we should, there should be a desire to touch him. You've heard me say before, you touch his heart, he touches yours. And when your heart is t touched by him, you change. Amen? John chapter 10. Fresh outpouring. Hallelujah. See, so there's sometimes, again, when no matter what we're going through, we know that there's something God is going to bring to us. Amen? Always. No matter what it is you're going through. In verse 7, let's speak it. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and I will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundant. Well, where is life? It's in his presence. Amen? So he's come to bring an outpouring of a fresh presence to me and you. Always available. We want life and life abundantly. I'm expecting some huge things to happen. Huge things. You should be expecting some huge things to happen. Amen? I mean, many of us have been through, I mean, you know, it's, it's been a rough year for many of us. Many of us have lost loved ones and all kinds of things that have gone on, people to addiction and whatever, you know. I mean, I've lost my brother. I've lost somebody to addiction. I lost my dog. I lost my bird. And I lost my hair. I'm expecting something great to happen. And we're going to close at Revelation 21. <laughs> I'm going to endure. <laughs> Glory. I think my dog died yesterday or my bird died today. The little chicken hawk. I guess it was time for him to go home anyways. She. <laughs> but we still have uh, goose. Goose is good. He's still talking, wanting to know where everybody is. Or what everybody's doing. What are you doing? Sweepy went home. Hallelujah. Revelation 21. Now there's a bird that endured. Stepped on about six times. Broken legs. Uh, fallen from many things. Lost its wings. <laughs> we, we were going to get it a helmet, you know, but... Hallelujah. Might have saved her on the last fall. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise. Verse 6. Everybody okay? <laughs> Revelation 21, 6. 
And he said to me, it is done. Hallelujah. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who what? Who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So as for me and you, it's available. Amen? Let's go to Psalm 1 for a minute. I want to close there. Glory. Verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's called rebellious. Amen. You know, the, your old man is rebellious. Do not take counsel from your flesh. It worse first thinking always. The carnal mind is worse first. And what it does is trying to prevent you from receiving the fresh outpouring. Because it hates God's presence. Blesses a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, which are liars, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, gossipers, hateful, but his delight is in the truth or in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates or focuses day and night on what God is saying. He shall be like a what? A tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall what? Prosper. Let me tell you, if God be for you, who can be against you, right? That means you've got to have God's presence in your life. There must be a continuous fresh outpouring. There must be a desire for a fresh outpouring. Those who thirst and hunger for righteousness shall be what? Filled. Filled. We must maintain that no matter what we're going through, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it smells like, no matter what it tastes like, amen? No matter what it feels like. Because too many people rely on how they feel. And they miss that fresh outpouring. It's got nothing to do with how you feel. All of a sudden, you're just joyful. You don't even know what the heck happened. Yes! What's the matter? Fresh outpouring. You never know. You could be driving down the road, walking down the road, all of a sudden, boom. But just know that it is available and waiting for you all the time. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we welcome your fresh outpouring. We thank you for rewarding us for endurance with your presence and a fresh outpouring. And thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done and all the things that we missed what you've done. We want to say thank you. So continue to keep us in position that we may be able to receive everything that you have for us so that your name would be glorified and we may prosper in all things for your name.